Hello again, welcome back everyone. Thank you for joining me. This is Liquor Hound with you, and today we're going to be doing a very special uh, bourbon review. And we have the Parker's Heritage Collection. Just about the entire lineup. I am missing the very first edition, which was released in 2007. It was in a cast strength bottling. Uh, it was an 11 year old, I do believe. I just totally ran out of it. I'm trying to find another bottle. Maybe one day I'll find it and review that for you. But until then, we're going to go ahead and start with the second edition. This is 2008 bottling of a 27-year-old bourbon. Some of the oldest bourbon you're ever going to find that's been bottled. Uh, it was actually put in the oak in 1981, sat in the barrel all the way until 2008. We're going to follow that up with the Golden Anniversary bottling. Uh, this was to celebrate the 50 years of service that Parker Beam had done there at Heaven Hill. And they actually took bourbons from the 60s, 70s, 80s, 90s, and 2000s, and uh, he was able to blend them together to do this special release. Next is going to be the 2010 release. This is a wheated mash bill. So again, you're going to have the 51% corn, but then it's going to be really, really just totally wheat heavy as far as the mash bill. Should be fantastic. I'm looking forward to, to tasting that one for you. Then we're going to move on to the 2011 release, Cognac Finished Bourbon. Now this really took a lot of people off guard. You know, a bourbon finished in cognac hadn't been done in most people's minds ever. Uh, there is a bottling by Booker No that happened many, many years ago. It was actually the very first um, hyper-priced bourbon. Uh, it actually released, I think, at $250 at the time. That was ridiculous considering that most bourbons before then were only $30, $35 or so. Uh, but we're going to talk about that one a little more later. But next, following that one, we're going to go with the brand new 2012 release, Cast Strength Bottling. And this is actually a blend of rye and wheat bourbons. Some people are calling it a four grain because, of course, it has the corn, it has the, the rye, the wheat, and malted barley as well. So I'm really excited to taste that one for you. Uh, let's go ahead and get to the little bit of color here. As you can see, they're all going to be pretty similar. 27 does have a little more uh, depth as far as the uh, bronze coloring. The Golden Anniversary, just a smidge lighter, followed by the Wheated Mash Bill. That one is the closest in color to the 27. It's just a shade lighter, but not by much. The Cognac Finish definitely has a little more red to the coloring. Uh, it reminds me of a Sherry Finished Whiskey as far as the color is concerned. And the Cast Strength, the Wheat and Rye Blend is just a little bit lighter. Again, it's very similar to the Golden Anniversary. Uh, but, hey, color's color. Let's go ahead and get to the nosing. 27-year-old. Very big oak, very big vanilla right up front. Along with the uh, raspberries, cherries. And a plum note. A good amount of cinnamon in there as well. But overall, it's not as heavy on the oak as on the nose as I thought it would be. It's actually very, very nice. Golden Anniversary. Mm. This one's much more balanced on the nose. You're getting the vanilla, you're getting the oak, you're getting a little bit of, a, of course, the fruits, a little bit of vanilla custard right in the middle, butterscotch in the background, but I do get a lot of caramelized, a lot of burnt sugar thing going on as well. Just a hint of leather on the finish. Uh, that one's really hard to, uh, really hard to describe because it is very, very well-rounded. Next, we're gonna go with the Wheated Mash Bill. Now this one is a 124.2 proof and I can definitely get that on the nose. The alcohol's right there. Uh, just I forgot to mention, uh, the 27 year old's 96 proof, the golden anniversary was 100 proof. Again, like I just mentioned, 124.2 here. Uh, the cognac finish is 100 proof, and the cast strength release, the 11 year old, is actually going to have three different dumps on that bottling. So depending on where you are and which uh, version you're going to get, you're going to have three different proofs probably out there. This one is 131.6. Now back to the weeded mash bill. I get a really nice, thick aroma of the, it's almost like I want to say a yeast, 
almost like a cinnamon roll thing going on in the middle. You do get a lot of the raspberry and cherry in this one. I'm almost thinking like a, um, you know, a bread pudding with a uh, little bourbon sauce on it. Very, very full in aroma. The cognac finish. Wow. Right up front, you can tell something's up on this one. <laughs> Mainly because the big nose that I get on this one is a lot of uh, uh, plum, fig. And almost like a, a, a date, a, dr a dried date thing going on. A hint of raisin as well. So that cognac finish is really what's predominating the uh, nose on this one. Now if we dig down a little deeper in that one. There's like a, 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 a dark cherry note in the background. I think Again, I think the fruits are becoming a little muted just because of that heavy cognac influence on this one. A hint of spearmint in the background and uh, of course the vanilla. But overall, very, very nice. And the newest release, the Cast Strength 11 year old. That one has a huge cinnamon um, a nutmeg thing going on. It kind of reminds me of a um, mm, really nice eggnog. That's what that one is. Very creamy and buttery on the nose. Again, I'm getting a cinnamon roll thing, so it's kind of reminded me of the wheated mash bill. I think, again, that's that wheat playing very nicely with that rye. The rye providing the cinnamon and the spice, the wheat providing the cinnamon roll, the uh... And again, the fruits are pretty vibrant on this one as well. So you're getting the raspberry, strawberries, and plums on that one to uh, commingle with the cherry note. Okay, so let's get to the tasting. We're going to start with the 27. One thing to note is that I did add a little bit of water to each of these. The ones that were heavier in, in alcohol being this 131 and this 124, uh, I actually got a few drops. The rest, I just gave it two or three. 27 year old has really opened up pretty nicely. The uh, wood is of course the predominant player here. But right after the big oak note right up front, then it fades right at query, well, rather quickly into the uh, cherry note and the vanilla. Here comes the caramel, uh, mid palate, and the cinnamon is uh, lingering on the finish. A hint of tobacco as well coming on towards the end. Overall, a Pretty, pretty nice bourbon. Uh, the viscosity, the mouthfeel, <clears throat> isn't quite as oily as I thought it was going to be being 27 years old, uh, but it is rather nice. Yep. Very nice. Very big bourbon. Again, if you, if you want a full flavored bourbon, that 27 year old will fit the bill. The Golden Anniversary. Much softer on the oak note. It allows the fruits to really shine right up front. A lot of plum and apricot uh, to go with the uh, the cherries and raspberries. A lot of cinnamon spice, mid palate. Towards the finish, it's a very light tobacco. It's almost more of a leather, a leather note going on. Rather sweet as far as bourbons go. Wow, that is such a lovely bourbon. So well rounded. 
nobody's really uh, taking the lead role there. It's, they're very careful in how they blended that one. Excellent bourbon. Next, we're going to go to the wheat and mash bill. Again, this is 10 years old, so let's see uh, how it's faring. Wow. Very smooth. Less spice than I was finding on the Golden Anniversary. Just a little less cinnamon. For being 10 years old, it's really not being really right up front with the youth as far as being very spicy, very hot. And it's the fact that that wheat is really taking control here and filling up your palate. So it really feels much, much older than it actually is. It's almost uh, reminiscent of the 27, but without all the oak. Wow, that's fantastic bourbon. Again, fairly sweet, similar to the Golden Anniversary. And that's the one thing you're going to find in this collection, is that while they all have similar characteristics, they're going to have different parts that shine every year. So they're all going to carry pretty much the same fruit, caramel uh, notes, but the th thing that's really going to differ here is the amount of wood in each, and uh, the vibrancy of the fruits and the spice. That's what's really going to change throughout the years. Overall, the 2010 Wheat Mash Bill, fantastic bourbon. I highly recommend that one, mainly because, again, it really is a full-flavored, very thick, um, again, I get like a uh, bread pudding is what it reminds me of right in the middle. Fruits and spice that tend to mingle all the way throughout the finish. I'm not getting nearly as much tobacco as I was finding on the first two on the finish just the faintest hint of tobacco on the fin on the finish now we're gonna go on to the you know what let's hold off on the cognac just for a sec we'll save that one to the end I think that cognac might uh, interfere with the palate so we're gonna go with the wheat rye the calf strength 11 year old That's fantastic. I know I say that a lot, but when it, when a bourbon hits me like that, it's like, wow, that's great. This one, a little bit drying, so the uh, the youth of that whiskey uh, doesn't have as much wheat to help it out as this one did. But the, the nutmeg and the cinnamon and the vanilla uh, going along with the raspberries and the cherries in this one is very, very nice. Again, it still is pretty sweet, moderately sweet. Just a really big, nice eggnog thing going on. I still taste the eggnog almost. Very creamy on the palate. Uh, I like the way the wheat is really helping balance that one out. The rye is giving it all the spice. Uh, the 11 year old aging is giving it plenty of youth and vibrancy. Uh, but the wheat is able to round it out very nicely. That is a true champion right there of this collection. Now, let me set this one aside just for a second. And the reason I want to do that is we have a little surprise guest. And it's going to be Distiller's Masterpiece, 18-year-old cognac finished bourbon. I've never reviewed this one for y'all, uh, but I thought this would be the perfect time, especially considering <clears throat> how much uh, great reviews the Parker's Heritage has been getting. I wanted to share with you how fantastic this is. Uh, Booker Knows version was. Uh, the one thing, coincidentally, that they both shared is they both used Alain Royer, which is the very famous Cognac House master blender there in France, to help select their barrels. And um, let's see how well he did. Very light and smooth. Uh, when, it, when it comes to the actual heat on this one. The cognac finish shows up right up front with the plums and the, um, the fig and the raisin. But it, 
that rather quickly fades. Yep, right up front with the raisin and the fig and a plum note. Fades right about mid palette, and here comes the oak. It's drying out a little bit towards the middle. A little bit of cinnamon and uh, vanilla. But mainly what's lasting throughout the finish on this one is the oak and the uh, red fruits, the stone fruits. And that, that, um, that raisin note is kind of lingering in there as well. Very nice. It is a little warmer than I would like it to be. And let's go move along right here. Let me nose this one for you. This one, the one thing that you can tell a huge difference, now granted, you know, I'm comparing a 10-year-old with an 18-year-old. It's really not fair. I'm comparing a, you know, a $100 bottle to a $250 bottle. Again, I'm not comparing these to say that Parker's is not as good or it's inferior to the Booker's. It's not what I'm saying here. What I'm just letting you know is that it's been done. These are the only two times it's ever been, bourbon has ever been finished in Cognac. And I just wanted to share what the main difference was between the aging. Uh, the 18-year-old is almost a, a perfect balance on the nose. So you're getting the cognac, but then it's very nicely with a, a nice sweet bourbon nose right on the background. So you're getting the oak, the vanilla, and the red fruits in the back. But it's not like this one was. This one was very cognac right up front on the nose, and it was you had to dig to find the bourbon notes in it. Not this one. This one was... To me, it's almost split right down the middle. And the taste? You can't argue with this one. This one is so smooth, so well-rounded. The cognac doesn't give you... It's definitely right up front, but it's, it's like a... Uh, you know, a, a grand champagne cognac where it's the finest cognac. So it's had many, many, you know, eau de vies to, to blend in, 100-year-olds, let's say. Mm. So whereas the cognac note is very, very nice right up front, and it softly fades into the oak. Here comes the bourbon, the butterscotch, the vanilla, the fruits are well represented here. And they all play really nicely together right into the finish. Uh, the 18 years really did wonders on this bourbon. I wish this one maybe had been, maybe used a 15 year old. I think that would have been fantastic. It would have gave, let the spice come down a little bit on the bourbon. Um, maybe given the bourbon just a little more predominancy as far as the uh, flavors here. Let me go right back to it. very nice. I'm not saying it's not good. It is very nice. I just think five more years would have just put this one just about where this one was. And and I'm almost thinking, you know, this one sold, I think, at around $89 to $100. Well, considering many of these, $200, you know, $150, and the newest one, way over here, is now coming out around $80 to $120, you know, maybe you could have put that one out at $150. And it would have, I mean, I know, like I said, it's got great reviews, but I think it would have been Whiskey of the Year very easily if it had been 15 years old. Maybe, you know, kind of a warm opinion, but again, it's just my opinion. So I want to thank everybody once again for watching my videos. Uh, I hope maybe you learned something, and hopefully if you see one of these and you kind of wonder what they tasted like, that helped you out. So everybody have a great evening, and cheers.